Do you like fighters or spacecraft design? Grab your copy of the first Space Dock reference book all about these topics on our Patreon through the link in the description and pinned comment below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hojuana and today I'm going to cover my top 10 walkers, which is an odd thing to define because there's so much crossover with mechs, but I think I sort of figured it out, mostly. Starting off at number 10 is the ATST, which, well, it's an okay design. I enjoy its very utilitarian feeling as well as the ability to swap the side weapons in and out. The problem is that it was never really shown as anything other than a bit of a joke, as cannon fodder for trees to smash up. It wasn't until its incredible appearance in the first season of The Mandalorian that it really became an awesome vehicle. In ninth place is an entry that I don't think anyone would have seen coming, the gigantic steampunk spider bot from Wild Wild West. Yes, the movie is incredibly dumb and not very good, but I love this ridiculous machine. How does it function without computers? Who knows? Who cares? It looks intimidating as heck with its size and ridiculously powerful underslung fireball weapon thing. It's also one of the more mobile and agile vehicles on this list since it was shown, briefly, taking actual advantage of having giant legs to climb a big cliff. There's even neat bits of attention to detail like the cables running over the legs either for tension or control, and the big pistons on its ankles, and the big ol' smokestack. What I love most about it though is the animation work that went into it. The artist did a fantastic job capturing the aspect of a spider and translating it to a big hulking machine. It has a real sense of weight to it. At number 8 is the AT-80, I can't not include this. A gargantuan war machine that really extolled the unstoppable power of the Imperial Army with their relentless march towards Echo Base. Sure, some of them were taken down, but as a whole they just kept on going, stomping through the rebel defences and winning the day for the Empire. I like tanks, so of course I would like the slab of metal that is the AT-80, though I've never understood it being used as a transport. I mean, how? Okay, jet troopers, sure, they can get down from this and would look awesome doing so, but everyone else? I guess they could fast rope like out of a helicopter or something. I also love how there's many variants of the design, like the early version seen in Rebels. I'm not terribly fond of the pointless upscaling that happens to many of them though, like with the cargo version in Rogue One, which stopped being a variant of the AT-80 because of that. The First Order one remained an evolution of the design, but not a good one. Seventh place goes to the all-terrain experimental transport from the Clone Wars game I had the PS2 version of. Look, I know it wasn't a great game, but I had fun with it. I was a kid, okay? It had this thing in it, an Advanced Republic prototype that led to the Imperial Chicken Walker, and it just looks awesome with its LAAT styling and big mortars on the top. It also had a shield generator, which is very rare for Star Wars ground vehicles, and is probably one of the many things that made it too expensive to mass produce in this form. It would have been nice to see more of it in other formats, and maybe even brought to canon, but it is fairly niche. Number 6 is from Supreme Commander. There's a number of walkers in the game across the factions, but the Psy brand definitely have the most. One of them is even a ship. The second largest one they have, and arguably the most recognisable in the whole game, is the Monkey Lord. It was even so iconic they brought it back nearly unchanged for the second game, which is saying something. Why it's called Monkey Lord, I don't know, because it's a giant six-legged insect machine with a huge microwave laser turret on the top. Seeing that huge beam sweep across enemies, obliterating them on the go, never gets old. It's definitely one of the more satisfying weapons in the game. It's also amphibious, and even has torpedo launchers to defend itself from attacking ships if it it can't bring its laser to bear. It's also one of, if not the cheapest experimental units, so you can make multiple of them and do a huge amount of damage with a sneak attack from the sea. In fifth place are the Tachikomas from Ghost in the Shell. These little guys sort of defy definition, so it's hard to decide what video to put them in. They are robots, but they can also be manually controlled, but they're also fairly small by the standards of this list. But they're spider tank-esque, so they're not really mechs either. So they go here, because I'd never talk about them otherwise. Their best feature is how incredibly mobile they are, thanks to having wheels as feet, letting them zoom around if they need to. But they can also clamber around up walls and over ceilings while making zip lines to swing from just like a spider. Being relatively small means they can fit inside buildings, and they have optical camo so they can hide in unexpected places to collect intelligence or to wait in ambush or whatever really. They're also armed and have a bit of armour so they can engage in combat up to a point. 
In fourth place is the ATTE, the Chonky Boy, who I actually have an old Lego model of up on the bookshelf behind me. A very clear predecessor to the ATAT, but it just looks better, especially with the big mass driver on the top. Though even the basic form of it as a big bug is just way more interesting than the big grey imperial cow. I think Ryan Church designed it, who has done many other designs I love all over the place, like Avatar's Valkyrie Shuttle and some others in this very list. As a transport, it makes way more sense because it's actually low to the ground and can lower itself even further because its legs are side mounted. Seeing it do all sorts of neat stuff like walking up cliffs or being deployed on asteroids in the Clone Wars is also really cool, as was the modified one in Rebels. I wish more ground vehicles in Star Wars saw some imaginative usage like that. The number 3 spot goes to the Combined Strider. Though, should this even be on the list? It's not really a walker, and it's not really a robot, it's a biomechanical being all by itself. But I did stick the gunship on the aircraft video, so I'll say this counts here. In Half-Life 2, these are the highest end enemy the Combine throws at you. They're big, they're tough, and they carry a significant armament, a very accurate and very painful machine gun, and a charge-up laser that can obliterate entire buildings. Or they can just smash stuff with their legs by stepping on them, or even stabbing them with these spiky bits on the ends. They're very rarely alone as well, as they're often supported by scout units who spot for them, or even get sent out en masse when the situation is really dire, like towards the end of Half-Life 2 when they were let loose on the inner city. Really awesome enemy to fight, though I maintain that that battle in the train station at the end of Episode 1 is a bit overtuned. The penultimate walker is the Martian fighting machine from War of the Worlds, specifically the iconic design from Jeff Wayne's musical adaptation, and it's largely here because of nostalgia. I was introduced to the vinyl version of this when I was a kid, and it had this amazing art that absolutely captured my imagination, and got me obsessed with War of the Worlds. We obviously can't include any of the music here because copyright, but just trust me, go listen to it. As for the tripods themselves, they are a very pulp sort of style design with those big green bug eyes, but that's what made them so enduring, and makes them stand out from the other tripod adaptations over the years. Some very quick honourable mentions before first place, starting with another Star Wars thing, the ATHH, because it's a strand beast, how cool is that? I also like Wolfenstein's London Monitor, the Spider Tank from Ghost in a Shell, the Dark Terraformer from Jack 3, and Mass Effect's Geth Armatures and Reaper Destroyer. In first place, and my favourite walker, is the tripod from Spielberg's War of the Worlds. This is the ultimate version of the fighting machine in my eyes, and it's yet another design that Ryan Church worked on. They are an amazing update to the tripod, with many elements that make them feel more animalistic and terrifying than ones that came before. Things like the flexible, tentacle-like legs that still had some joints in, and the huge hooded lights on the head of the vehicle. And those searchlights really amp up the scare factor, because you can tell when one is looking at you. You, and when they see you, well, it's all over. If you're lucky, you'll get zapped by the multicolored beam of destruction they carry, and if you're unlucky, you'll be grabbed and stuck in a crab pot for consumption. It would have been really interesting to see this film's interpretation of how the aliens feed on people's blood, but it probably would have broken the point of view of the story. There is this neat bit of concept art, though. The only thing I don't like about them is being hidden underground in some sort of giant screw up and vault. It's a neat idea, but it feels like one of them would have been found, and also forgets that the ground does actually change over time. Their best feature though, is the thing I haven't mentioned yet. The horn. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon, where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.